hi everyone welcome back to the channel i hope you're having fun uh today i'm going to introduce you to macros um i love macros they're my favorite while so many other programming languages have functionalities like macros or literally macros like c c plus plus rust or some other programming languages have some functionality close to macros to run code on compile time but none of them uh come close to macros uh, least macros are by far superior in my humble opinion to other types of uh, functionalities that let you run code on compile time not just run code on compile time to create to expand your language expand your compiler um a few years ago uh, i was watching an interview with matt uh, the guy who created ruby um in in the q and a ses uh, session somebody asked matt uh should we expect macros in ruby and he replied and said over my dead body um i since i used this for a long time it was a bit awkward to me like i was like macros are such a great feature why someone not don't want to like implement macros in their language but in uh to be fair um now i get what why he didn't want macros in ruby because macros shine in lisp due to the nature of lisp like literally as i mentioned in uh in the first episode first or second episode while we write some code in lisp in fact we are actually uh filling up on a data structure uh like, like a giant list of different expressions and Basically, that's what we do while we program in Lisp. But in compared to that, in other programming languages, you have to memorize the grammar, a syntax to like write your program, and it's the compiler or the interpreter job to uh, transform that syntax into a data structure. But in Lisp, we literally work on the data structure itself. I'm not going to go into details, but just because of the simple fact, uh, macros shine uh, brighter in Lisp rather than other types of uh, programming languages. So to begin with, what is a macro? We can think of a macro just like any other function. Um, they're a unit of computation like other uh, like functions as well, but there's some uh, differences between macros and functions. The, in my opinion, the most important one is that macros run on compile time, but functions run on runtime. But what is a compile time and in compared to a runtime? In, in compared to runtime. So let's imagine we have a, like a two-phase compiler um, that like okay, static compiler. Yeah, it's better to say say it this way that statically compiles the code and generates some uh, native code and then we run the native code on its own and it just uh, does its magic um, when we invoke the compiler to compile our code whatever language it is statically to generate some native code that process is the compile time and when we execute and invoke the native code to do, like literally as executing the program the resulted program that's count as the runtime so let's say our compiler understand lists any type of list when we have macros and functions together while we invoke the compiler to actually generate the uh, compile the uh, list code to the native code it runs the macros at that stage and it leaves the function in the like generate the code for the functions in the target binary so later on when we start uh, like executing the binary the functions run at that time that's the main uh, difference the second one is that like uh, if you remember from the list rule that we talked in uh, very few first episodes whenever we um the evaluation rule of a list is a function call. So whenever we want to call a function, we evaluate each parameters that we want to pass to the function. We evaluate every argument as parameters, and then we pass the, uh, pass them to the function as uh, arguments, right? 
um in case of a macro we don't do that so when we call a macro we don't do anything to the uh parameters we leave them as they are and we pass them to ma to the macro and it's up to the macro definition to decide what to do with the parameters um functions are unit of computations like their uh, functions are descriptions to compute a value right they have a return value they work on runtime they compute a value but macros are a com like our unit of computation as well but instead of computing a value they compute another another expression so a macro literally returns another expression a new form in a lisp and it's the compiler's job to uh, expand air code expand a macro and replace the macro call with the returning ex expression so um as an example like a uh, a simpler way to understand macros let's say you have a, I don't know like a markup like HTML right you have a file uh, with HTML markup if you ever work with uh, in web development you know that there's like different template engines that you can actually compute some value and replace it in the HTML file uh, to you know to create your uh, template uh, macros are kind of the same, but instead of HTML, you have Lisp code, and a macro call is actually a, pla a placeholder for you to replace it with another expression. So whenever you invoke a macro, depends on what goes in, in, in the macro, Lisp will actually replace the macro call with the returning value. So this way you can actually expand your language in compile time in compared to runtime. It might be a little bit hard to understand at the moment, but uh, we're going to talk about macros for a few episode and episodes and a little by little, uh, it's gonna click. Um, okay, one, one other thing that I have to mention is that, especially in Emacs Lisp, it's only a specific to Emacs Lisp. Uh, there, like, we have functions inline functions and macros I, I didn't talk about inline functions yet but just as a heads up um there's a like inline functions are just functions that the compiler will, instead of like uh, the compiler will inline them in the call site that means that like whenever you write a function the compiler will literally grab the body and replace it in the source code wherever you call that function but macros are different. Macros uh, can compute some new, uh, like compute a new expression, and compiler will will replace that new expression. Um, it just for you to know. Many times you want to use inline functions in compared to macros if you want if you have something really simple. But today, for the sake of argument uh, and for the, like uh, for the sake of uh, learning about macros, I'm going to uh, kind of forget about this fact and try to do everything in macros. Okay, um, let's see how we can actually define a macro. So in order to define a macro, we can use the def macro form. Uh, just like the function, like def fun to define a function, we can actually use def macro. Uh, the format is the same as the fun, right? Uh, there's some details uh, that you need to take care of when you define a macro, they're, up, uh, they're optional. I'm going to talk about them in the next episode, but for now, uh, let's ignore them. Um, as I mentioned, they're just like functions, so they accept any number of uh, argument and they has to return a new expression. So here, uh, I'm defining a new macro called inc for increase and it returns, uh, returns a list, right? This list has a symbol, like a function symbol, uh, one plus as the first argument and the value as the second argument, whatever value we pass to the uh, macro. So literally here, I'm creating something like this, right? That value can be anything that we pass to increase, right? So the return value of this macro is this expression. So uh, let's give it a shot. Uh, 
I define the macro and then I'm going to use it, right? So I say increase 10, as you can see, it returns 11. So far, so good. No, there's no nothing different about this macro with the functions. I can literally uh, replace uh, def macro with def one. And of course, I, instead of returning a list, I have to evaluate, like call this function, but both work the same. But the difference is, um, I'm going to show you like in the next section when we talk more about the expansion, uh, how it actually works. But the difference is uh, right now, the ELISP interpreter is going to uh, call this macro with number 10, gets the returning uh, list and replace, uh, replace this macro call with the return value um that's how easy macros are but for a simple expression it's easy to construct this simple expression but when it gets uh bigger like it's kind of hard to work with like to it's, it's going to be hard to construct a new expression let's have another macro called uh, my def um, simple macro that creates a new variable but it creates a variable name with a prefix my dash, right? So like before, we have two uh, arguments, name and value. We create a list with set Q as the, as the first argument. So it would be like uh, set Q, so far so good. And then here we have some function calls. Let's start by this one, the inner one. So there's a function called symbol name. Uh, you can pass a symbol to it and it returns the name in uh, as a string, right? So to show you how it works, symbol name, some symbol. Uh, sorry, I passed the value, I have to quote it. Do, 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 give me a second. Okay. So as you can see, it returns X uh, as a string. But here, uh, name contains something as the first parameter to my def. So we're going to get the value of name in a string. Concat, as we, uh, as we discussed it in the previous episode, it cut, uh, concatenate this string to whatever symbol name returns. And at the end, in turn, we'll actually create a symbol out of uh, whatever string we pass to it. So here we're going to have something like my dash and whatever value name holds. I'm going to leave it like this for now. And at the end, uh, the second value, the third actually element of the list is just the value. So it would be like whatever value return. As you can see, it's quite simple. Let's define it. And Let's see, let's use it. My def. And if you notice, actually my syntax highlighter um, reads macro differently. If I define a function, right, and I do, right, if I do this, it doesn't highlight it uh, as it does with macros. So it's kind of treated as a, like a built-in syntax or a, like a special form in a list. Just, it's not a special form, but I mean, the syntax highlighter treated, treats uh, macros differently. So let's create something called, uh, I don't know, uh, 44, right? So when I execute this uh, macro, when I call this macro, it should create something for me like this, right? So I have a, yeah, I have a variable called my blah with, that holds number 44, right? So again, what happens here is that Elisp calls this macro, passes the arguments to it, it returns a list and it replaces the macro call with the returning, uh, with the returned list. So, so far so good, we returned list in two macros, but we can have like, we can return any expression we want, right? This is like 
this macro here the macro foo is just a, like a really a stupid macro you shouldn't really do this but just for the sake of uh, um, learning um we have a macro that literally works like a function it whatever value we pass as well it increases it by one and returns it so if here i re, uh, change to function nothing will change right so they work exactly the same but the only difference is that uh when when i call foo with something with some number oh i forgot to actually define it first um when i call it with number 30 that computation of increasing value by one happens in the compile time and the function call the macro call will be replaced with the returning value which in our case is 35 uh, 31 right but in case of a function um whenever we call the function in, in uh, runtime there's a, like a jump happening to the a start of the function block uh processing the body like computing the value and then there's a return which jumps back to wherever the call site was but in terms of uh, but for a macro since it's gonna replace the value with whatever it returns when the execution flow gets to that point that there used to be a macro call they're going to be just number 31 and uh, just like one instruction um this kind of stuff it's better to leave them for functions or if you're really um up, like if you care about the performance and optimization you can use uh, inline functions personally i don't know how exactly the function inliner in elis uh, compiler works so i just know that it's gonna replace the body with the uh, call site uh, with the function call on the call site but uh, you can refer to the document uh, to elis documentation for uh to more information about uh, inline functions okay now we know how to define a, a really basic macro uh, you you might find similar macros in uh, different like in standard libraries of uh, emacs list but usually to create macros people use uh, cozy quotations i'm going to talk about them in the next episode uh, they deserve their own uh, uh, time but for now uh, we learn how to define really basic macros but when you work on macros when you work with macros you need to know how to like it's not easy to debug them you need some functionalities to work with macros to know what they expand to uh, expand into there's three functions that you, you can utilize uh, macro expand macro expand dash all and macro expand dash one they work the same but they work like in different levels of expansion cycle what's an ex expansion cycle so i told you that uh in compile time the lisp compiler actually uh will replace the macro call with the return value uh, with the return expression from the macro but what if that return expression is a macro itself or contains few macros within so basically how it works uh, the compiler actually has a loop when, whenever it gets to the uh, and I'm talking about a generic compiler not uh, elisp compiler uh, to be specific so in a generic lisp compiler when we get to a like a macro call uh, we just execute it in compile time when we get the new expression as the return value we look, look into it we, we treat it as the rest of the code right so we walk the return uh, expression and whenever we get to another macro we expand that one as well if it has some macro call in itself we, we expand that one as well so it's kind of like a recursive call we keep expanding macros until they return the expression that we end up with is free from macros right so the macro expand function actually expands all the top level macros so if your macro returns like two macros it makes sure that it expands both macros on top level and return uh whatever it uh whatever those two returns as long as they don't have any 
uh, macros on top level. Macro expand all expands everything. So whenever macro uh, expand dash all return a value to you, you can make sure you can be sure that it doesn't contain any macros. It uh, expands every macro that you pass to it. But macro expand dash one, which I'm it is my favorite. Uh, I I rarely use uh, use macro expand or macro expand dash all. I can't even remember about them. Uh, but I frequently use macro expand dash one because it just works on the first level. It just expands the macro that you uh, give it to it, right? And it doesn't care if the return value has other macros. It's really good to uh, kind of debug just one macro. So let's see it in action. We define the ink macro um, in the top. If I run this thing, as you can see on the bottom left, it return it like the ink 10 macro will be actually yeah no it's not so the ink 10 will be ex, will be expand to plus one uh one plus 10 right for the my dev if i expand this one as you can see it expands to the set q my dash blah 20 and we can even you like expand other macros that we didn't define for example when we talked about when uh when we talked about the conditionals uh in elis uh we have a like a simple one here with a, like a stupid condition that prints something let's expand it uh for this one let me do this just to um have something to talk about so when i expand this one uh da, 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 da. Oh, okay. Sorry, my bad. Mm -hmm. When I expand this one, as you can see, um, it actually, uh, uh, when micro expands to an if, right? Super simple in just the program and the else clause is nil. Or, um, what other macros I can think of? Um, actually, I, I I don't know whether it might work or not because can't exact. Ah, it's gonna take a long time to. Uh, nah, let's let's ignore that. I try. I wanted to uh, show you a, like a real macro that I'm using at the moment, but it's really big, and I have to uh, pass so many parameters to it. So let's uh, skip that one. Um, so as you can see, uh, expand macro uh, macro expand is actually quite useful. Uh, whenever I use, uh, whenever I work on any macro, I keep using uh, macro expand. So to show you some um, real macros, actually, let me yeah, that might be a good example. So yeah, here is a macro. Uh, I use it to merge flags in my editor. What is flag? Uh, what is a flag? I'm going to talk about it in the way in the uh, future. But as you can see, we use the back code here or a cozy quotation, but it literally is like a templating language for expressions. We're returning some, uh, we're returning a new expression with a function and we uh, actually replace the value of flag set here uh, I'm going to talk about this uh, in the next episode, but as you can see, macros can be really small, or at the same time, macros can be a little bit complicated, like this one here. Uh, it's a, like a big one, or even if I want to show you like a really big macro, I have a macro here, which is quite, it's a giant macro, right? It creates so much stuff. Um, so uh, depends on what you want to do, uh, you can either use macros or inline functions or functions, but just it's important to remember that functions are runtime, macros are compile time, and unlike functions ma uh, in macros, uh, ELIS won't evaluate the parameters to a macro, right? Um, it just leave them as they are and pass them without any evaluation to the macro. Um, that's it for today. 
if you have any feedback or any question for me uh, you can find my contact on my website lexamir.com or uh, give me a shout out on uh, twitter uh, my twitter handle is lexamir uh, i would love to uh, hear your feedback or if you have any question for me um, thanks for sticking around and see you in the next episode